Hi, I'm Peter Whitney, and I used to be an old-school RuneScape addict, and this game still lives rent-free in my head to this day. But for a good reason. Sometimes they manage to do something very funny or strange, and it's noteworthy to talk about. Here's the thing that came out today that made me want to make this video. Makeover updates. A big part of old school RuneScape is having the freedom to play the game your way. And that should extend to your character creation too. We want our players to have the freedom to express themselves in Gilinor, just as they would in real life. Sounds exciting. Just fantastic. Let's see what we're coming up with. With this in mind, we've updated the makeover mage interface. Players may now choose between body type A and body type B, offering the freedom to pick their body type without restriction of gender labels. Thank you for marketing the nullification of the biological sexes. What's body type A? That seems really sexist. How dare you? This should be body type A in my opinion because after all, it's very feminist. I'm obviously joking, but let's continue to read the article. To give you even more of room for self-expression, you can now choose a preferred pronoun for your character from the following options of he, him, she, her, or they, them. You can also continue without selecting a pronoun, if that's what you prefer. The game will use the default based body type similar to how it always has been. This is great marketing language. Very, very professional and very well written in that regard. However, it's so stupid because you can always, you could have done this already by just picking a different character model. Why are they doing this? It's so that they can pander, obviously. Especially with they, them, or just removal of the pronouns entirely. It's just blatant pandering to a audience that I feel as if is in a very small minority and is very much not engaged in RuneScape. If they are, hey, great, now you can be a they, them, and you could, or you can just have no pronouns, I guess. But you know what? The real kicker is how people have been freaking out. But let's continue for now. We've updated these options in both the makeover mage interface and the character creation menu. Pronouns can be changed in the settings menu for your convenience. As you can see, you have they, them, she, her, he, him. You have a purple skin color if you really want one. I don't know why we can't be the color red, orange, or yellow in this menu, but you can definitely be purple for some reason. And we also have the character creator here in its full glory. In other news, all the facial hairstyles can be used on either body type so they can rock a beard or a mustache whenever you like. Additionally, the new makeover interface previously used for hairstyles only has, been re has replaced the Salia and Yursa's interfaces. You can freely swap between them no matter which shopkeeper you talk to using the button in the top left corner. Here is a very big focal point that I am seeing here. I understand that there are people who will tell me that they can change pronouns depending upon the day. I typically leave you alone. It's fine if you feel more feminine one way and you want to be called a guy and then you want to be called a girl another day. 
fine. But here's the real kicker here is this is subject to so many changes in the game itself. For example, there's a quest called Recruitment Drive in which you have to change your character to a male from a male character to a female character. And the reason is is that it actually comes from a really amazing reference to Lord of the Rings where Yoin Theoden's niece defeats the Witch King but the Witch King was so overconfident that he could just defeat anybody because no man could defeat him and Yoin a woman defeated the Witch King brilliant riddles and stuff like that right and brilliant wordplay that just got completely neutered I wonder if that part of that quest is gonna even be in there anymore it was such great references and great lateral thinking that you had to do and now that entire part of that quest is ruined and what are you gonna do about the throne of miscellanea where you have to marry a prince or a princess depending upon your character's gender have you fixed that yet i have to wonder but the real kicker here is this is something that can be weaponized by other people and culture warriors are seething about it let's go ahead and go to this tweet here now, probably not for the any reason that is of ill intent, but I have to emphasize this tweet conversation here, or these posts on X. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up. Twitter has now decided to identify itself as X. And tweets are now identified as posts. Kind of annoying, but... I'll trying I'm trying very hard to respect Elon Musk's decision here. Now the news says, "Hey Jagex Ash, this is Mod Ash. Can we have a report button for misgendering? With the latest update, I think this should also be implemented." Mod Ash responds, Thanks for the suggestion and sharing your concern about people being treated that way. And he's doing the smiley face there. Cheers, Ash. Could We could all maybe also add the pronouns before people start escape names in the chat. He replies again, I expect some engine work would need to be needed for that. Now, imagine, you know how I made that small little reference to Twitter being identified as X now imagine if I was banned from Elon's platform or reported for calling X Twitter by accident this is something that can be easily weaponized imagine if Elon said it is against our terms of service to call X Twitter because it's not Twitter it's X you have to respect the new name. That would be stupid, right? But now, think of it as RuneScape characters. If you're just trying really hard to be respectful and it just sort of slips that you say he, him instead of she, her, now you can probably be muted for that or permanently banned depending upon the context of the conversation. And if you want to be a bad actor, someone could just swap their pronouns mid-conversation and say, actually, I'm she, her, you're misgendering me. And they said, what are you talking about? You had no problem with me addressing you as a male earlier. And a petty dispute, which happens a lot in games, in online games like this one especially, that will just erupt by a thousand. Report abuse will have 
tenfold the amount of requests for hate speech now. All thanks to this. Now, let's finally go back to what I was saying earlier. This is just, while well-intentioned, just really stupid pandering. Now, again, do I have a problem with anybody who's trans? No, I don't have a problem with any of these people. I just think that when it comes to big corporations pandering to people in the name of Pride Month or whatever, or Black History Month, it comes across as shameless pandering to get your money. It takes probably good causes that I personally don't have a whole lot of a stake in, but for people who actually care about these things, it just comes across as cynical. Plus the fact that you're now essentially getting as many culture warriors as possible all riled up. I'm not logged into the game today, but I would not be surprised if that there was yet another set of people dressed up in desert robes and white mystic hats in the middle of Falador screaming the worst expletives, and a Jagex mod just comes in and bans them all. Do you want to know how I know why this comes across as tacky pandering to the current player base? And the new one, I've seen this before. There was a mini game, or rather a event, called Gilbert's Colors. This was a game in within the game where you collected some colors and he would weave a scarf for you and say, by the way, gay people exist, or something to that effect pandering, preachy, and just kind of stupid to include. Over this, so many people erupted in rage and said that there is woke garbage going into their game. Okay, even if they're right, that's not the right response to have. You're what I personally think Jagex is doing with this update here as well-intentioned as it is, is part of a greater picture of misdirection. Why don't I go ahead and scroll up? Look at this. You have a off-hand or left-hand slot here. Remember when that was in RuneScape 3 and that was declared as EOC? This was an idea that stretched all the way back from the game's inception of, I want dual wielding. Well, you have it now, but this was also in RuneScape 3. That's interesting. Okay, let's control ourselves here and not jump to conclusions. Oh, look, Slayer Partners. Wasn't this in RuneScape 3 as well, where you had slayer partners interesting they seem to be very focused on other things right now but they seem so similar i'm getting deja vu why don't i go ahead and go back further in time here i want to start with january 2024 what's going on here oh look dead bender of varic where have I heard this before? Oh, that's right. This was in RuneScape 3, I believe. I could be mistaken, but it sounds awfully familiar. There's Scurrius, the Rat King. Now, some deep lore on this channel. I, When I had an Ultimate Iron Man, I threw on a podcast with some of my old school RuneScape friends at the time. We found an idea for a rat boss for low-level players. And it was posted maybe five years ago or so. Look who showed up from the Reddit post. A rat boss. How interesting. Okay. 
That seems like a strange coincidence. What's this? Sailing? The thing that failed the poles is now in this game? Very curious. I thought that was voted out. Something here. While Guthix sleeps. Is that yet another RuneScape 3 thing in this game? And with the old school, you know, shellac on it? I'm starting to think that they might have ran out of ideas. And they have no way of actually recuperating from this, even though they have gold beneath their feet. That's still true in this sense, but look at this. They're still talking about adding a new skill. Let's take a look here. Let's go to August around here. I swear there was some more interesting juice here that I found. We found forestry, a fortress coliseum. Interesting. Shooting stars. How fascinating. Isn't that in RuneScape 3 as well? Honestly, I kind of feel like that's just insulting. Let's go further back. Let's go into September. Forestry, a dead man, that was actually pretty good. A hunter guild, because of course a skill needs a guild. Just has to have it. Look at some of these. We have leagues, we have sailing, some more about sailing. Get excited for sailing. Oh look, Desert Treasure 2. You know, the Temple of Senatistan was the sequel to Desert Treasure. Why is it called Desert Treasure 2? If you're just gonna cut and paste a quest, why not just, I don't know, go over the Temple of Sanitistan? Interesting. Seems like the same exact quest. Just if I were to take a stab at it. I'm starting to think that they're trying to basically insult your intelligence a little bit or at least that's how i feel and bounty hunter wow interesting bounty hunter we are getting another mini game that already exists in runescape 3 how long has this been going on interesting land of the goblins oh my goodness they're not even trying to hide it anymore. This is really sad. I really, really wish that they would just work on the stuff that was already there. But look at this. A very, very new piece of content as far as I'm concerned. That's interesting. Why are they rehashing the stuff from RuneScape 3 and putting it in this game? Why are they going ahead and focusing on brand new content on top of that? When there could be great quality of life updates that they could take a look into. For example, what if I were to say go all the way into the future, or rather the present, and we go to Slayer Partners. I'm certain I found something here. Oh, look. Quality of life updates. See this? All you had to do was do updates like this. And you would have had some constant player engagement, in my opinion. And not to mention that... You had so much gold sitting under your feet this whole time where you could just go to existing minigames and actually retool them. Pest Control is a really good example. I remember this, having their own boats for higher tier levels and just being retooled. That's great. It's a good minigame. And I 
thought when I was looking through earlier, I saw Shades of Morton had a new update. Great idea. Why aren't you focusing more on ideas like this and growing old mini games? The Slayer skill. Okay, fine. Build off of the Slayer skill. Build off of woodcutting. Build off of the things you already have. To their credit, yes, Jack X does this. But instead of rehashing RuneScape 3 ideas, just start with that. Don't add a God Wars dungeon. Don't add the Grand Exchange. Don't do things like that because it's just RuneScape 3 in another box. It's stupid. And here is something that really caught my attention was when I was looking at death matching. I was wondering what this meant. I was wondering if this was a big piece of game news or whatever. But here's something that was the best sentence I have ever read that came far too late. Since the removal of the Duel Arena back in 2022, to stop the activity which we deemed unacceptable in line with our rules, such as real world trading, that's where I stopped reading and just made up my mind. Jagex is just way too thinly spread for a small studio. Not to mention the fact that they have addressed a huge critical area that needed to be addressed from the inception of the game. This sentence pissed me off for a lot of reasons. Now you finally address the integral issues with your game. It took you nine years to get rid of the Duel Arena completely. A complete RWT laundry scheme that you had there. You tried putting in a fee, which doesn't work. You tried putting in all types of other barriers. But it was just a laundry in a gambling pit. If I wanted to gamble, I would have went to Las Vegas. But everyone else in the Duel Arena was just there to launder money or shamelessly gamble RuneScape gold that they would RWT anyway. This is why I am very pissed at you, Jagex. And not to mention, there is another update that I can think of. Remember how long it took you to get rid of the AFK Nightmare Zone issue alongside with AFK splashing? I thought so. So, I have to address something with you culture warriors. If you're quitting over this, or if you're just throwing yourself a bit of a tantrum like Null on Kiwi Farms did, then I have some really bad news for you. The reasons you should have been throwing a tantrum over old school RuneScape existed a while ago. Imagine it this way. They, there was this meme out on Reddit that said, basically, Jagex is grabbing a RuneScape 3 idea. They show it to the player and then they say, oh my god, what a terrible idea. It's not RuneScape old school. And then they just simply come up with the idea of, oh, well, let's just put old school RuneScape shellac over it or put it into the shitify machine. And the basement dweller then responds, Wow, what a great job. They think of you that exact way. And you keep forking over money and clapping for crap. My math teacher put it best, even though I didn't like her. You can't clap for crap. That's what leads to stagnation. And this is just a symptom of this disease. Hey, great, you can add pronouns and you can have they, them. 
At best, this is just pandering bullshit for people that really don't have an interest in this game. And at worst, it is a way of stoking the flames of the culture war in a way to stay relevant like some stupid grifter just like pearl davis just like keffels just like andrew tate etc etc it's stupid but the other thing that i noticed is that this is a complete smoke screen for not addressing things that were incredibly vital and then when you do address them it's way too late and the implications are so big that it's a disaster think of it this way you had god knows how long to play tesora and see how learnable the boss was and adjust the drops accordingly you then nerf it basically last minute you do the same thing with the karamja shop i absolutely despised the people who used the karamja shop because wow was that broken i got ripped apart for calling it out for what it is and then when jack x finally addressed it the reddit NPCs just went with it like nothing happened. And they just clapped for crap. Same with AFK Nightmare Zone and Splashing. Once Jagex fixed it, we clapped for crap again. <coughs> Sorry, when I mention stuff like this, it makes me very ill. My main grievance with Jagex is very simple. You're using misdirection with nice to have updates like this, that at best come across as preachy and pandery, and at worst are trying to spark outrage and rage bait clicks and trying to get culture war stupid crap from the news to start talking about your game i don't think that however that would have been the case the thing that i really have a problem with is this is a smoke screen for jack x's bigger issues such as not fixing some of the things that are obviously broken and not using the resources limited already within old school runescape itself and not addressing the fact that they're using the content shitify machine and presenting runescape 3 in a different box it's silly it's annoying and it should not be a surprise to me but it's simply a death of a thousand cuts of something that I used to hold really dear. I want to now go over a little bit about myself. I have done old school RuneScape a lot, obviously. I played as an Ultimate Iron Man with a 99 Herb War under a moniker called Dr. Toby Fox. Probably long gone because that account I have no access to anymore. I, for whatever reason, I have no idea why. But the problem here is I spent a ton of time on the game and when I was murdered by a superior abyssal demon I then just looked at the daunting task of rebuilding. I just said, fuck it. I am done. I don't care anymore. I was thinking about how to rebuild the character at the time and then I looked at the game around me and I said, wait a second. All of the things that I hate hate are being implemented into this game why should i give it more of my time you need to start thinking like that it's not just because of the effing pronouns but this is just the most cynical misdirection ever 
So if you're going to quit this game, don't let it be over stupid culture war crap like this. Quit the game because old school RuneScape has become a cynical, pandering, mismanaged mess. And this is just one pimple on the gigantic ass of Jagex while there are gigantic cysts that have occurred and were only just recently popped at best and at worst are festering. Let me give you some other examples. Like I may have mentioned before, Nightmare Zone, AFK Splashing, all the amazing Duel Arena that was real world traded to death and back. All of the dead content that I can name off the top of my head, like Trouble Brewing and maybe Shades of Morton. I think there was an article about that, but they only re resurrected it just recently. Uh, Temple Trekking. Pretty sure that's past dead content, isn't it? And some of the guilds are absolute dead content. Just think about all the dead content that they have that they can resuscitate, but don't. Think about all the new content that is just RuneScape 3 in a different box. Adding a continent with the letter Z in front of it, or the letter X, or the letter V is just getting old. And finally, think about the more cynical thing of Dragon Slayer 2 or Desert Treasure 2. Come on. Do you really need more of the same stuff in a different box? It's getting old. It cheapens the game. And man, when I look at that stuff, I say, I am so glad I quit. But thank you for watching. If you happen to be from Jagex, please take this as a way of improving your game. I really want you to do well without me, and I genuinely mean that. But every time I look at this, it's like death by a thousand cuts to a puppy I used to own. And it just gets sad and it's heartbreaking, but I see it so many times and I'm just so demoralized. There's nothing I can do. For, for the rest of you, if you plan on quitting, don't let it be over this stuff. That's what Jagex wants you to do. Quit because it's a bad game. And it is no longer fun. But for now, goodbye.